Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're glad to have you along with us. Also happy to be joined today by the Acting Mayor of the City of London, Councillor Josh Morgan, the Warden of Middlesex County, Kathy Burkhart-Jesson, the Chief Medical Officer at London Health Sciences Centre, Dr. Adam Ducolo, and the Medical Officer of Health for the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. We're also glad to be joined this afternoon by the media who are in attendance. And just a reminder that if you could indicate your name as well as your media outlet and who your questions are for when you submit questions today during the briefing. And if you haven't done that yet, all you need to do is click on the text bubble with the question mark you'll find here on Microsoft Teams. And we do have a, a lot of space right now for questions, so uh, better to get those in early than to wait for submitting those. And finally, a welcome this afternoon to those of you who are joining us on Rogers Television, as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, listeners on Global News Radio 980 CFPL, and those who are watching on the CTV London website. Let's get to the opening remarks right away, and we'll start this afternoon with the Acting Mayor of London, Josh Morgan. Well, thanks, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. It's a new week, and I think that's good reason for new optimism now in our year and a half long battle against the COVID-19 virus. Uh, for starters, uh, students in London, Middlesex and across Ontario are beginning their third week back to school, and despite much concern and plenty of unknowns headed into the school year, so far the early returns are extremely positive where case counts are concerned. For example, on the first day of school, September 7th, the seven day rolling average for daily counts in London Middlesex was 22.3. As of today, that rolling average is virtually unchanged at 22.7. It's the same story across Ontario where during that time, case counts have remained essentially flat or even slightly lower than they were compared to when classes resumed. Obviously, things can change, but as students enter their third week back to school, it is certainly a positive sign. Beyond that, I'm also encouraged by the ongoing progress in our vaccination efforts, both locally and provincially. Slowly but surely, more people in our region and across the province are doing the right thing by rolling up their sleeves and getting vaccinated, making the choice to protect not only themselves, but the vulnerable members of our community. So with flat case counts now that classes are back in session, along with increased vaccination rates, those are two reasons to be optimistic right now. But there's also reasons to be increasingly hopeful in the not too distant future. We heard earlier today that significant progress is being made when it comes to securing vaccination approvals for children between the ages of 5 and 11. There's still no firm timeline as of yet, but it's reassuring to see clear progress on that front. This is a cohort that remains unvaccinated, not because they're unwilling, but because they're simply unable to, at least so far. Once that option is available, it will add another layer of protection for all segments of our society. Beyond that, as of this Wednesday, proof of vaccination will be required at all dine-in restaurants, nightclubs, gyms, sports facilities, and other venues across Ontario. Not only will this lead to greater consumer confidence, it will invariably make those venues safer while reducing the likelihood by reducing the likelihood of transmission. There are other equally important upsides to this policy and how it's driven vaccination rates. Uh, the other day I was going for a walk in my neighborhood. I was stopped by a gentleman who wanted to let me know that with all the discussions of vaccine passports and vaccine mandates in the news that he had gotten his very first COVID-19 shot. And uh, him and I had a great conversation and he was, he was very excited to now be vaccinated. Uh, I talked to him about his hesitancy. Um, he said he really didn't know why, um, but with all of this uh, this news about uh, uh, about the passports and the vaccinations, he thought now was the time to do it, and hopefully he is the first of many. Um, uh, it's it's a great story, uh, you know, and it was nice of him to stop me and uh, and talk to that uh, talk to me about that. So uh, that's part of the great news that I have to share today. And with that, I'll throw it over to Warden Burkhard Jessen. Thanks. Great. Well, thanks very much for that, uh, Deputy Mor Mayor Morgan. And as always, it's great to be with you on a uh, warm sun September afternoon. Um, looks like this could be the last of our summer days that we're able to enjoy. 
So as Deputy Mayor Morgan said, this is a big week in Ontario with proof of vaccinations now being a requirement for certain establishments and activities. And we certainly do not need to go very far on social media to read comments about the showing of proof and of course the upcoming digital passport. For many, this is an emotional subject. And as has been the theme throughout the whole pandemic, I implore everyone to be patient and to treat everyone with respect and kindness. Remember, those asking for proof of vaccination are doing so as a requirement that has been imposed upon them. Arguing and creating a scene with an employee from a local eatery or a security guard at a recreational facility will not change where we are today. We are in this together. So please do your, your part, think of community and get your vaccine. It's funny that um, Josh would share a story um, about somebody in his community stopping him because I have a similar story, only that's from a member actually of my own family who for a number of reasons has been very hesitant to get a vaccine. And I was pleased uh, in speaking with this member who um, is a closer member of my family uh, last week when he uh, called me to say, you know what, mom, I did it and I got my first shot. So it's happening and I see, you, it, nobody else can see this, but uh, Dr. Mackey uh, raised his hand and fist in celebration and, and uh, it has been a weight off um, my shoulders in having that conversation with him. So it's never too late. And uh, for whatever reason, if you're hesitant, if you've taken your time, um, please, go to one of the pop-up clinics, go to a pharmacy, you'll be treated with respect and uh, uh, we'll all be pumping our fists to say thank you. So since it's election day in Canada, and I tend to be a bit of a political junkie, I have to get my plug in to encourage those listening to today's briefing to get out to vote if you've not already done so. As Canadians, the ability to vote is not only right, a right, but it is a privilege. And I want to thank those that have put their name forward to represent a chosen party in hopes of re representing community and country. Standing in front of an electorate is, no, electorate is not an easy thing to do, but to take part in the democratic process is the envy of many across the world. So please do not miss out on this privilege. And Dr. Mackey, over to you. Thank you very much to the acting mayor and to the warden. Uh, as, as usual, uh, really hammering on the important key points, so thank you very much. We are seeing, as uh, the mayor pointed out, fairly flat rates over the past, almost the past month, which is, uh, you know, really tremendous at this time of year and not to see a significant increase in cases. The rate of deaths continues to be low and these are all real positives. And, you know, our community is among those with the highest vaccination rates uh, pretty much anywhere in the world and tremendous credit to everyone involved in the vaccine campaign, as well as everyone who rolled up their sleeves. We do have pockets of vulnerability, and you're seeing that now, you know, children being diagnosed as schools open, not necessarily because of school, but because of the testing that happens when children are attending school, if they have symptoms. I'll briefly mention the outbreak at, at the uh, school that was announced on Friday. Uh, we had very uh, low rates there. There are four cases uh, of COVID diagnosed in that school, but only one of them seems to have been acquired at school. One confidently we can say was acquired elsewhere. Uh, another was unrelated. We can't find any links within the school. So, you know, while we technically did declare an outbreak there, there really isn't a lot of evidence of spread and uh, hopefully those numbers will stay low. The vaccination campaign in terms of the rates continues. You saw the announcement over the weekend that 85% of Ontarians have received their first dose. I imagine when we get our Saturday data on Tuesday morning from the ministry, we will see similar numbers here. We were very close to 85 as of last week. And the, uh, the, the campaign through the mobile and pop-up clinics continues to be strong and continues to be a driver of our numbers. In the, in the six days that we vaccinated, 
at White Oaks Mall. Uh, we already hit about 1,200 um, doses administered there, and that campaign continues. We've extended that agreement with White Oaks Mall for an additional two weeks. So we'll, we'll be there, looks like, until October 3rd. And again, thanks to the mall for the partnership there, all the staff and, and everyone who's rolling their sleeves up down at White Oaks. Uh, it is a neighborhood that has had lower vaccination rates and higher COVID rates. So we're very happy to be uh, in there and working with the community and uh, that going so well. With the move towards vaccine certificates being required this week, uh, we have seen lots of people asking questions about how to best implement that, both in their workplaces or, you know, in, in the places that they frequent as patrons. And just, again, so grateful to everyone who's doing, taking this so seriously and thoughtfully. Lots and lots of great questions. Lots of great, you know, suggestions and alternatives. People brainstorming, trying to get this right and trying to do things as safely as possible. So that continues to be an important piece of work for the health units to do to support those questions and uh, an important partnership with our whole community on that. Dan, I think I'll pause there, and uh, we have Dr. Duclo here to speak from LHSC today. Thank you, Dan, uh, Deputy Mayor Morgan, Warden Burkhart Justin, and uh, Dr. Mackey. And thanks for having me here today to provide an update on the COVID-19 situation at London Health Sciences Centre. As of this morning, we're caring for seven COVID-19 positive inpatients, with five or fewer of those in our ICUs. On the vaccine front, our medical affairs and occupational health and safety teams have been working tirelessly to reconcile our attestation rate with submitted proof of vaccination. While we're still in the process of validating our exact vaccination rate, I'm pleased to note that based on the flood of proof we received, it appears that the large majority of our people are on track to meet our October 22nd deadline for mandatory vaccination within the walls of LHC. I also want to acknowledge Ontario's vaccine a certificate or passport program coming into effect this week and remind everyone that the passport is not required to access essential medical medical services at our hospitals. We remain open and available to provide care to all those who need it. That said, of course, we do continue to strongly encourage everyone who is eligible to receive their vaccination at their first opportunity, as well as to continue to follow public health guidance on hand washing, masking, and physical distancing. Lastly, as we look ahead to later this week, we are hopeful that everyone will safely enjoy the many official homecoming activities that are planned. We are asking our student community to please avoid taking unnecessary risks as you partake in the festivities. It remains important that as a community, we do our best to help preserve hospital capacity because that is what allows us to not only be prepared to respond to any sudden increase in COVID, but also to continue meeting the non-urgent and emergent healthcare needs of our community, including planned surgeries and procedures. Thank you again for having me and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Duclo, Dr. Mackey, Warden Burkhardt Jessen, and Acting Mayor uh, Morgan. All right, uh, let's get to those questions. We've got a couple in the queue right now. And again, a reminder that if you are a member of the media joining us for today's virtual media briefing and you have a question you would like to ask, please submit it. Just click on the text bubble with the question mark in it here on Microsoft Teams and uh, as well who your question is for and we will get that answered for you. Let's go to the first question in uh, on for this afternoon. Uh, Dr. Mackey, this one is for you. It comes from Jane Sims at the London Free Press. Uh, Dr. Mackey, now that we are two weeks into the school year, are you seeing any warning signs that the schools might soon be swamped with cases from the fourth wave? Have they done better or worse than expected as far as the number of cases showing up in classrooms? Yeah, it's a great question, Jane. We're a bit too early to say better or worse. You know, I, I look back at the school uh, cases that we had in the 2020 to 21 school year, which ended, and, you know, we were at about 350 cases, uh, bearing in mind that those cases would not have been associated with schools during the period the schools were closed. If you average those out, you know, it's it's pretty close to on par with where we're at. We might we might be seeing uh, a bit more in terms of case counts uh, than we had in those previous years, uh, but it's pretty early to be able to say that with any confidence. 
Thank you very much. Let's go to the next question. And again, uh, a quick reminder, this actually right now is the last question in the queue. So if you are a member of the media and you've been waiting to ask your question, uh, now would be the time to get it in for today's virtual media briefing. Uh, this question is for Dr. Mackey and for Acting Mayor Morgan. Uh, and Dr. Mackey, we'll start with your response on this one. Uh, Western University's homecoming is this coming weekend and by extension, FOCO. Have there been any plans or beefed up enforcement of COVID related bylaws? What advice do you give students for this weekend? Appreciate the question very much, Jane. We are looking at what the options would be there. As you know, there is a, a multi-agency task force that works on this together and say, and continues to work on that. Uh, you know, partners like the police and city bylaw have been working very hard and we're looking at what options uh, are the best to implement from the health unit's perspective. In terms of advice for students on the week, uh, for this weekend, you know, we, we will be releasing shortly a red, yellow, green sort of uh, postcard style info, infographic that helps people to see what the safe ways to party are. And there are safe ways, and we really encourage people to party safely. Uh, what the what the ways uh, to party are where there is some risk and, and the ways that we really uh, identify as risky in the community. So that will be released likely later today. Acting Mayor Morgan. Yeah, thanks for the question, Jane. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, the, the first part was about um, plans for beefed up enforcement and uh, COVID uh, related bylaws. Uh, as Dr. Mackey said, there's a, a multi-agency task force on this and their work involves uh, all aspects, including um, communication and education leading up to the event. Uh, the materials like Dr. Mackey said about uh, if you are going to have fun and have a party, here are the safe ways to do so. But as you know, also uh, enforcement and uh, and of course uh, supports on the day of any event. So uh, the answer is yes, uh, there is active work on this file and uh, and that continues each and every year and of course is is especially important uh, during a year where there is the added risk of a spread of, of a very uh, crippling virus. Um, what advice do I have for students this weekend? Uh, I, I think uh, Dr. Ducolo said it very well. There, there are ways to take unnecessary risks and there are ways to be very safe. Uh, and what we don't want students to do is take unnecessary risks. Uh, I think Dr. Mackey outlined the types of materials they're putting out. I think that that is a good approach. Um, obviously, people want to celebrate on homecoming weekend. It, it is a weekend to come together and to celebrate. And there are very safe ways to do that. And there are very high risk ways to do that. And we want it to as much as possible, make sure that our students and all of our community members uh, take uh, common sense, reasonable actions when they get together and when they want to celebrate and avoid the unnecessary risks. So I'm sure it should come as no surprise that a very large uh, street party without masking or, or protections is a very high risk way to celebrate homecoming and there are much better ways. So uh, it's our hope that uh, students will make the right decision uh, to have a lot of fun this weekend, but do so in a way that, that minimizes their risk to themselves and our community. Thank you very much, Acting Mayor Morgan. Uh, that does bring us to the end of the questions that we have for this afternoon's virtual media briefing. Uh, Dr. Ducolo, Dr. Mackey, Acting Mayor Morgan, Warden Burkhardt Jessen, thank you so much for uh, your participation, your insights, your expertise, and, um, and for being part of this uh, as you do on a regular basis. Uh, that will do it for us. We will be back with our next virtual media briefing, and that is coming up on the 23rd, Thursday, the 23rd of September, and that is at 2 p.m. We hope you'll join us then. So between now and Thursday afternoon, have a great rest of your day. We'll see you and uh, so long for now.